Good morning, folks. Welcome back to Sun Up on 7. It's time for our first conversation with our friends from the Crocodile Research Coalition. So let me introduce our guest. We have Executive Director, Dr. Marisa Tez. How are you, Doc? Good morning. It's Monday. I mean, wow, we love it so much. You know, the energy and, of course, you know, starting the month, Croctober. It is Croctober, yes. Right, so we're excited to hear everything that you have planned. But let me introduce a lovely Darcy Ucles. Darcy, how are you? <laughs> Hello, darling. Hello, How darling. Doing? How are you feeling today? You know, I had coffee this morning, so I do have a lot of energy this morning. People are like, you don't eat coffee, no? That's the thing. I consume more <laughs> coffee. I consume coffee more like more than water, which is bad, yes. you know? Well, I love what she's like, more than water. Mm. 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 You could be like the crocodiles and submerge yourself in the water, yes. darling. Are so. <laughs> you sure you want me to submerge? You know what? Um, <laughs> let's submerge yourself in this conversation. <laughs> hey, by the way, that's a really cool rush card. Oh, we have them on sales. I just wait, wait, model, model, please, yeah, please, wait, please, wait, please. wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 the camera needs to get on you, one second. Oh, where is the camera? And you have to move right here. Move to here. Oh, yes. There we go, there we go. Let me move the yes. knife here. See your seat. The knife, yeah. They also come in black, like this part is black, and part of the proceeds obviously go towards our conservation efforts. Are, um, around country, but mainly <laughs> Placencia like you. But then we uh, have the logo here on yes. this side. Logo. Yes. Love it. Contact us if you'd like some. We're yes, going to share those details in a few, <laughs> right? But let's tell us, what have you been doing in the, in the last, since our last conversation? Like I, we were talking, you've been in conferences, you know, advocating on behalf of crocodiles. You've been doing presenting surveys, your all these surveys. Things. So give us a snippet of what have you been up to? So, um, oh my gosh, yes, we were here this past June. Uh-huh. And we were about to go to Chatham Mall for the International Conference of Crocodiles of the Crocodile Specialist Group. From, so the IUCN Species Survival Commission Crocodile Specialist Group. Uh -huh. And there was myself, as well as Jonathan Treminio, who is our research biologist from Orange Walk. And he presented about his research on New River. Because our research in New River, what we are finding, obviously, is that the pollution in New River is turning the crocodiles into what we call white walkers. And so oh. the, there's something in the water that had been turning the skin of the crocodiles white. And then we had conducted necropsies and a fresh, a crocodile that had just passed away. You conduct the necropsy, so you look inside the body and organs were melted, <gasps> kidneys were falling in our hand, and it's because of the long-term exposure to whatever pollutants were happening in New River. And so I assisted Jonathan in writing a grant. And so he actually has received two grants now to lead the research of New River to find what contaminants um, are causing these white walkers. And of course, we're just utilizing the crocodiles as the main species to really determine what's in the water, what heavy metals, what agrochemicals. And we have receive some preliminary data and what we're finding is lead and mercury mm -hmm. and we do know that lead can cause some of the symptoms that we've been seeing in the white walkers and of course it's not just affecting the crocodiles it's affecting everything else and then it's affecting communities i live in orange walk so this is like it's, it's really it's it's really like uh you know like quite like bizarre yeah. to hear you yeah. know what, what's going on there That's scary uh, as but well. the river itself like on the daily, like, it smells pretty awful. It's um, the first time we conducted research on the river. Uh, it may, I received, I got a bad headache. I became nauseated. I, we had to put on masks for the next night. It was so bad. But Jonathan is doing some amazing work right now. He has received international attention. And because what we're finding with the crocodiles here, we have gone to experts all over the world, and everyone has said, what you guys are experiencing, we have never seen before. So now people are looking at us, the CRC, as some of the experts in how pollution is affecting wildlife. Wow. So we're receiving a lot of information. Okay. And again, Jonathan, who is 25, 26? Let's give him a 26. Okay, he's a 26. <laughs> he's about 26 years old and young biologist, and he is, again, receiving international attention for the work that he's really doing. Cool. Really and cool. he presented this work at the International Crocodile Specialist Group um, meeting. And then we also had a young Belizean from Belize City, Zavi Molina, and she presented about some work that also has just blown the mind of international scientists because we have found that parasites and small crocodiles and possibly other small animals can actually cause what's known as metabolic bone disease. So they 
create scoliosis and all that. So like arthritis uh, in, in, in animals. No? Yeah, in animals. And so, and this is something you kind of have seen with people as well. Um, more in the more in the early days, like 18th, 19th century. And so she presented this poster about how parasites can cause um, certain bone diseases in, in wildlife. So we got a lot of international attention with that. And then what, it was really actually nice to see, but people were starting to come to CRC and in regards of seeing what we're doing here in Belize and some of the changes we have made, particularly with perception, um, so we were highlighted in various international science magazines nice. um, about our work here in Belize. So Belize was really getting highlighted um, at this particular meeting. And I'm really just so happy. Like, I mean, it's the team. Like, we're, we're, we're not using the traditional methods and we're not going the traditional route when it comes to trying to create coexistence. Um, you Ooh. always hear people talk about, oh, crocodiles are and really important for the environment. Oh, crocodiles are really important for economy. They can bring in a lot of tourism. Guess what? Some people just don't care about how important crocodiles are to the environment. Yeah. Some don't care that they might bring tourism dollars. But how about crocodiles are connected to your culture? They are part of your identity. If we lose crocodiles, and not just crocodiles, if we lose jaguar, if we lose mangrove, if we lose certain wildlife and habitat here, we're also losing a piece of who we are. Yeah. And so that's where we decided that um, we've been pushing it the last couple of years is nature, wildlife is connected to our to who we are, to culture. And so that's why we have the theme. Conservation through education oh, and culture. Darcy, that was so sweet. Can you say that? <laughs> you can say that again, but you can say with your This is so dramatic right now. <laughs> Conservation through education and culture. 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 We, give it, we give it a little twist, culture, you know, just to... Because oh, we work a lot nice. with yeah. Creole communities as well. Yeah. So. And I think that's a really important theme too as well. So wrapped around that, what are the activities that people can get involved in? It's Croctober, so we're not just doing a day. And I, I love the fact that we're not doing a day. We're doing an entire month. So that means there's a lot people can get involved with. Tell us a little bit about, you know, certain things that can hike people's interest and say, hey, hey, I want to do this. Darcy? <clears throat> Tell me, my darling. Tell me. <laughs> you need more coffee, apparently. You need more coffee. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. Adi, yeah, right here. So, um, so right before October, uh, we decided to plan a whole month schedule mm -hmm. of, you know, school visit, and um, which includes primary, like primary level, secondary level, and tertiary level. Okay. And this also includes environmental clubs all over the districts and other news media's platform. And um, so that's one of the mean that most of the school they never reach out to it, right? So I end up the bad day. And <laughs> you have, have to, to pressure yeah. them. No, and that's the thing. And, and, and a lot of people are afraid to do that, but I think that's the way to do it because you've got to be consistent in these things. Yeah. Uh, so we reached out to the different um, organization and schools. Okay, we're Croctober is Crocodile Month again. So what's popping? You want us to go talk croc? <laughs> and they're like, oh, we love crocodiles. Why not? So, um, so we decided to, so that's one of the ways that we're doing it. And another way is through our social media platform. So like, again, if you notice with the social media, it's very informative. Every day we post something different yeah. and that is current and that we're doing on a daily basis. So starting October 1st, we started off with a video that shows and talk about the team and um, what Cracktuber is and what we're going to be doing all this month. And then uh, on the following, each day we post something that's relatable to the team and also that's us educational and that has a lot to do with crocodiles and culture in Belize. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, here's like one of our posts. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So that's one of the posts and it says image was the source of life guiding Maya hunters and fishermen to sustenance where the crocs are the fish will be given fish are the crocodiles primary diet. Yeah. Oh. And if you have heard um, so I don't know if you guys remember the last time we spoke about image, which about means that. crocodiles, the first day of the Mayan calendar. Yeah. Um, with image, you no, know, like the Maya people that believed that the earth was on top of a crocodile's back. So it, for them, it wasn't just a crocodile, it was a god. And they saw crocodile as a way of finding fish. 
and local fishermen. So I'm from Sembai. It's a fishing community which was named after a net that fishermen, local fishermen were used to fishing. Yeah. So a lot of people survive from fishing. Um, it's a very traditional village. So they still will have like old fishermen going into the mangrove areas and fishing. Um, they ha we have had fishermen telling us, oh, we see a crocodile. Dars, we see a crack, you know. <laughs> the crack be big, no. <laughs> and they were exaggerated. And sometimes they're like a lead three foot up. But, yeah. you know. It's big. <laughs> it's big to them, OK? Yeah, it's big. And I'm and I like, oh, OK, for real? What do you see it? Right, that's all right, cross the mangrove area, girl. So, like, they didn't, they didn't approach it and kill it. They know that the crocodiles are important for the ecosystem. And, and where there is mangrove, there is crocodile. When there is crocodile, there is fish. So if you look at it, everything connects. And nature itself and conservation and wildlife connects to each other. Like, we don't want, you can't have all, and you can't have a good result. So you got to, and that's, the, that's why we decided to go with the team, conservation through education and culture. One, education is important. I have volunteer and work with different NGOs. We'll have volunteer with different NGOs. This is the first time working for an actual NGO. Um, and I never saw, they, like, they didn't really focus on education a lot, like not at all. They just focus on, on protecting their species and also like, telling, people not what to, like, telling people not to do it. Yeah. And with CRC, we focus a lot on education. It's not about just capturing crack, like I have mentioned before. And, and it's community yeah. involvement. And it's community and, and involvement. The aspect is, and like, the culture it's, it's aspect. It's really beautiful like, the fact that you can see where it fits into your lifestyle. Mm -hmm. yeah. right? mm -hmm. we just, sometimes you just take crocodiles for granted, but whenever you hear how it integrates into your yeah. lifestyle, you're like, oh, like, I, you see the value of it more than what you're saying, you know, like the monetary and, and, the, and the tourism value. You see like, how it's yeah. integrated into your day. And you know it. Like, even whenever we do educational outreach, because, again, we do it in different communities with different ethnicity group. Like, we are, whenever, like, Santa Cruz is a Spanish, like, most of the kids, they don't speak Creole or English, so it's Spanish. So we are, like, and again, that's where culture comes in, and the, that's where the language comes in. There isn't a barrier because, yeah. you know, there is, like, that culture aspect and that connection that we have with people that we have made through intense education and community involvement. So on so. that same idea of, you know, getting that connection, mm -hmm. I know when you guys go out into schools and so forth, it's always impactful, fun. Like, it's not just mm -hmm. the common talk. Because no. people, yeah. nobody wants a lecture where you feel like, no. yeah, this, this is what you're supposed to do, this is what you... No, no, they always make it interactive. Last time they were on, they, we had a game. Yes. A specific game that was... That made me scream <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, that's true. That's but true. it was fun, and I could imagine. I remember it was um, trying to figure out how to, what the crocodiles well, eat, mm -hmm. and so there were a, munch, a bunch of stuff in this box, and we had to push our hand in there and like feel it and figure it out. Right? That's one of the games that you can actually get when you have and invite you guys into the schools to be able to do the presentations. Mm -hmm. But I understand we have a next game. We have a new We game. do yes. have a next game because people think like when a crocodile goes after prey. They're 100% successful. That's not it. it. It's actually quite difficult for them. They have to tr try multiple times before they're able to get a fish, okay. or if there's a little booty, or a squash on the on the coastline, or whatever on the river right. shoreline. So it's hard. So we wanted to. We like to illustrate to people how hard it is to actually be a successful crocodile when oh it comes my gosh. to dating. Oh, this is gonna be hilarious. So no Darcy, worry. Would Just you like to FYI, use? don't worry about my ghetto mask. Yeah, she kind of, she kind of broke it, but it's... Hey, that's pretty cool, though. Hey, hey, hey. You kind of lifted right. to your, your um, so you might have to, like, pass yeah, so it, and you were going to work with that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. pass it to your microphone. So you might have to stay seated, and we can we can yes. try to do it oh, together. Oh, no. I know, girl. Come here, then. Okay, Let me okay. just I can put be. it in your face. <laughs> <I can laughs> so Kevin's going to be the crocodile. All right, so, so the just so that, so that everybody don't look All at right, it this way, right? One second, we're just getting the camera fixed, because we're trying to make sure... All the heads are seen, and the crocodile yeah. heads specifically are seen. I think so. he's on the, he's like sitting Look almost close sit to the pretty. head. Okay, <gasps> all right. So basically, um, my friend here, he's gonna be represent. <laughs> he's gonna be a crocodile, right? So I'm working through the cameras at this present moment, guys. Just give oh, me a second. Okay. Maybe I can sit next together. to you. Let's let's sit. Here. Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> hey, dog. Hi. <laughs> all right, let's do this. Okay. So we have a crocodile. Hey, that's a pretty mouth. Thank you. Good job. It's a mouth. Okay. Pretty good right. at sticking. <laughs> so just make... <laughs> so the, the <laughs> Come on. Okay. Um, so 
Kev's going to be a crocodile. Yes. Let me just, can you turn a little bit to my yep. side? Let me just sure. put it in. Look Sorry. at that! <laughs> okay, and Sorry. the, the right. part right. of it's, right. And it's Halloween, you know, so and it's Halloween it's season, so... Um, and then go can on, you, on, 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 on. Oh. <laughs> Open it wide. Okay. Okay. Kev, you okay over there? Yeah. <laughs> is it opening? Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So. All right. So let's sit there. Sure. Yeah. Let's do that. And you're gonna. Okay. And I'm gonna toss. Oh. Okay. Wow. You gotta, okay. You gotta be a crocodile. You gotta be a crocodile. So here's the little fish. So sometimes you'll actually see the smaller crocs just sitting on a sh on the coastline, and there'll be little fish jumping, and they'll just be waiting there and then waiting for the fish, okay? All right. So you're gonna be a crocodile. Now, with this, you see this, m ready? And I'm just gonna talk, <laughs> okay. okay? So you see this happening a lot when it's around, oh, there we go. Did Croc you get one? No. Nope. Okay. Crocodiles are more. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. It's, no. that's it's right. a kid size. Yeah, it's kid size, probably. Okay. So the crocodiles are more active around the new moon. Just hold it and go, ong, 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 ong. There we go. So. Your crocodiles are more active around the new moon. Put your mouth. So that's when you should be a little bit more vigilant and careful when you're fishing or Open your mouth at night. Or <laughs> possibly don't go. Oh, sorry. Possibly don't Almost. go swimming in the river. Oh, that was just bad. Yeah, um, <laughs> I go uh, around the new moon because that's when crocodiles are more active. But see, it's a little bit difficult. But I've also oh. seen some crocodiles would just like stay there with their mouths open for the fish to jump. Yeah. yeah, so there we go. All right, we got some fish. <laughs> and so again, this is just a fun way. As I was saying, crocodiles are more active around a new moon. That's when they're going to be hunting. That's when you're going to see them possibly on the shoreline with their okay. mouths open because they're waiting for fish to actually jump in. But as you can see, it's not that easy to be a crocodile. That is true. That is true. The strength and everything that they have to like uh. put on the effort, the patience. Wow. This so, is super exciting. So I, I love it. I love it. For, as we're wrapping up this segment, is there any final words you want to tell people in how to get in contact with you? I know you said you had a month of activities already. If any school wants yeah, yeah, if you any to school wants to reach out, I know we're planned, but so, can they still? Yes, so we still have spaces available for any university schools or any local schools or literally like any Halloween. club or even Halloween year spots, uh, events that are happening. You want a Halloween spot, huh? Yeah, why not? Okay. <laughs> yeah. I want to be a crocodile. So, yes, um, we're open. And if you guys can want to reach out to us, um, please feel free to message us through our social media platforms. And, yeah, we'll get right on it. Can you say yeah. the social media platforms again? Because I know you guys uh, post out something every single day, so people so should stay in tune. On Instagram, it's Crocodile Research Collision. Uh, on, on, yeah, on Facebook, yeah, it's on, on Twitter. Facebook. It's yeah. Crocodile Research Collision. Perfect. And um, Twitter is Croc Research, Research Collision. Col and then we also have TikTok. And again, yes. so this month again, it's conservation through education and culture. And like part of that is just, um, I'm just really quickly going to see the C word that sometimes people don't like to hear colonization uh -huh. um but part <laughs> yeah um so part the thing is is that through colonialism there's been a shift um towards having more negative perception on various parts of nature such as predators or thinking habitat and mangroves is not important but when you look at the roots of a lot of culture there is this connection there is this important so that's what we're trying to do we're trying to revive what's been lost through colonization and even modernization so that's why we dug up a lot of really interesting facts from the maya from some of the first creole settlements here of how their connection was with the crocodiles and also their environment and also bringing in some other internet i love how you're just still wearing it um yeah. also bringing in some other interesting cultural facts from other parts around the world to really revive people's interests and wanting to coexist with crocodiles as well as nature as a, as a whole. Beautiful. Super, super and just to add on to what Dr. T said, um, I'm not used to calling you Dr. T. No. <laughs> like, just to add on to what Marissa said, um, please don't be shy to message us if you guys know of someone who is interested in having us to do a presentation. Yeah. Um, we do believe that education is important. And um, again, we don't want, we're not here to convert people to love crocodiles but to learn how we can coexist with them because we can't get rid of them. No, they, definitely. They, and we shouldn't. They, and we shouldn't, yeah. We, shouldn't, yeah. We, we can't get rid of them and we shouldn't. 
So, so um, it's about getting yes. that education together, guys. There's great steps and it's very easy. We can do this. Message in. They have so much different media platforms. Don't run away from the It's always fun. It's always fun. <laughs> it's always fun. It's and it's always the games fun. are fun. Yes. In, like, when you talk to Daka, when you talk to Darcy and everyone, they, they make it interesting, okay? So they're not trying to make you a diehard croc lover, but no. you're at least going to understand what the croc is to our culture and to us. So with that, we're going to go to our next commercial break. Thank when we're back, both. we're going to be talking to a technologist ooh, about <laughs> advocacy and all his life works and some other nitty-gritty things. How can you be involved and what is the story about? We got the scoop and we got the fishes, apparently. So <laughs> stay tuned for that exciting conversation. We'll be right back. Come on, give open them up wider. You lost it. Oh, there we go. <laughs>